'Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, everyone was awake and no lights were doused. The presents were tucked under the Christmas tree with care, in hopes that they would be unwrapped and none would be spared. The Christmas ornaments inside the house were so beautifully hung, chestnuts were roasted and yuletide carols were sung. Three high school students were up late and should have been in bed, but they all decided to gather together and read a Bible story instead. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And those who heard it marveled at those things which were told unto them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. I love that story so much. I know, man. I never get tired of hearing it. Looks like the Christmas cookies are ready. Christmas, Christmas cookies. cookies. And then he said, Santa, of course, the other two don't exist. <laughs> now that was a good one. Yeah, man. Don't you just love Christmas? Oh, yeah. Every Christmas, I remember my mom used to fix our family Mexican food. It was the best Mexican food I've ever tasted. But she sure knew how to make it spicy, though. Yeah, I remember my mom would always bake our family fruitcake. And she expected everyone to eat it, too. And that stuff was nasty. Yeah, I never was a fan of fruitcake. Now, figgy pudding, that is some good stuff. Yeah. Except when it makes you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, you're being awfully quiet, little miss. What's going on? Oh, it's nothing. Well, it sure doesn't look like nothing. What's up? Well, I've been wondering about something for quite some time now, and I can never seem to find the answer. Well, what are you wondering about? Y'all well, might think this is a ridiculous question, but y'all think God has a sense of humor? Does God have a sense of humor? Well, of course he does. I mean, think about this. If God created us in his own image, and we're able to express humor, then why shouldn't he? True. I have to respectfully disagree. Oh, and why is that? I mean, sure, we express humor, but not everything we find funny is necessarily funny to God. I mean, if I saw a guy dressed in a Santa suit fall down some stairs, of course I'm going to laugh and find it hilarious. But will God find it funny because I find it funny? That's a good point. Well, of course not. I mean, obviously mankind will find certain things comical that God would not. It's part of our sin nature. Since God is perfect and without sin, he most certainly would not find crude and hateful jokes funny at all. However, I still believe in some ways God has a sense of humor. Alright, well... You're kidding, right? We're talking about the God that wiped out the majority of the human race with a flood, sent a death angel to kill the Egyptians' firstborn, and caused the Jews to wander around the wilderness for 40 years because of their unbelief. That doesn't sound like a God with a sense of humor to me. Yeah, well, obviously when God did those things, he wasn't laughing. But, uh, what about that time God calls Balaam's donkey to talk to him after he'd been it so many times? Remember that? Oh boy, every time I read that story, it cracks me up. Yeah, but the reason God did that was because he was angry at Balaam for rebelling against him. He didn't do it to be funny. 
Yeah, but it still was hilarious. Okay, guys, let's just... Hilarious? There's nothing hilarious about a talking animal, my friend. If my dog says one word to me, I'm sending him straight back to the pound. Oh, come on, Jake. You've had a conversation with the serpent and she turned out okay. Well, sort of. My point exactly. Look, guys, can we just... What about Sarah, Abraham's wife? What about her? Did she not laugh when she gave birth to Isaac? Which, by the way, means he will laugh in the Hebrew language. Sure she did, but what woman wouldn't laugh who was given birth at 90 years of age? Even Abraham thought it was hilarious. Aha! And you see? That proves God can have a sense of humor. Ho ho ho! But did God not recommend Sarah for laughing? That was when she laughed the first time, which as you may recall, was a mocking laugh. There's a difference between a joyous laugh and a mocking one. Okay guys, why don't we- Just a minute. I'm right, you're wrong. If you can't accept that, then you're not a true Christian. What? How does me believing that God has a sense of humor make me not a Christian? It just shows that you don't know the Bible. And if you don't know the Bible, you can't be a true Christian. Now that's the most ridiculous statement I've ever heard. And besides, I bet I know the Bible way more than you. Oh yeah? Yeah. What's the Eighth Commandment? Thou shalt not steal. What's the Eighth Plague in Egypt? Locusts. When were the sun, moon, and stars created? To the fourth day. How many soldiers did Gideon have with him in battle? 300. What did David do to Goliath after he killed him? He chopped his head off. Who was taken up to heaven in Jerry to fire? Elijah. What city was Jonah instructed to go to? Nineveh. What river was Jesus baptized in? The Jordan River. Trick question. Who wrote the book of Timothy? Um, Timothy? Eh, I'm wrong. The book of Timothy was written by the Apostle Paul as letters to his friend Timothy. It's in the first couple of verses. I can't believe you didn't even know that. Which means I'm right, you're wrong, God doesn't have a sense of humor, and you need to get a Bible tutor. Bahuya! Are y'all finished? Yes, ma'am, I believe we are. Well, finally. Well, what do you think, Nancy? Do you think I'm right or Jake's right? Honestly, I think both of y'all brought up really good points. I mean, like you said earlier, Nick, if we're created in the image of God and we express humor, then he must express some kind of humor, too. In the Bible, it says that God takes delight in his people. The word delight means a strong pleasure, joy. I think if someone takes joy in something, then they must express some kind of humor. But like Jake pointed out, there can be a dark side of humor, which is crass and crude, and I believe that God takes no pleasure in. In fact, the Apostle Paul brings up this in the book of Ephesians. It's okay for Christians to joke around and have fun, but if it comes at the cost of debasing yourself and others, then it's not really funny at all, but rather insulting. Kind of like the way you were insulting Nick. I mean, seriously guys, we shouldn't be fighting. We're both brothers and sisters in Christ. If one of us falls into error, it's okay for the other to correct them, but do it with love, not scorn or hate. Yeah, dude. I'm sorry for fighting with you, Jake. And I'm sorry, Nick, for saying that you're not a true Christian. Buds? Buds. And that's what I like to see. Besides, it's almost Christmas. Yeah, you sure don't want to be fighting on Jesus' birthday. Wait. Jesus' birthday? Hold on. Jesus wasn't born in Christmas. He was born in September. Sure, no, he wasn't. He was born on Christmas. No, Jesus was born in September. No, Jesus was born on Christmas. No, he was born in September. Christmas. September. Christmas. Dude, why do you think everybody celebrates his birthday on December 25th? Because man-made traditions always went out. Most scholars and historians believe that Jesus was born in autumn. There's even biblical evidence to support this. Do your research. I don't need to do research. I know Jesus was born on Christmas. Have you heard of the Christmas star? Again, another man-made tradition, there's no such thing as a Christmas star. I bet you also believe that there were three wise men. There were three wise men. And the Bible doesn't tell us how many wise men there were. And I bet you think that Jesus was in a manger when the wise men arrived. He was in a manger. And by the time the wise men arrived, Jesus was a young boy and living in a house. Read your Bible. Wow, I can't believe how ignorant you are. And you can't say for sure he was born on Christmas. Dude, I know he was born on Christmas. Here, do you want me to prove to you that he was born in autumn? No, because you just need to twist everything to make it fit your personal. And so ends the story of how a night that started out so great came to a terrible turn of trivial debate. So I will end with this farewell, even though it's sort of trite. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night.